Hey, y'all. You know who I am? You know I'm Suzanne Tidkemeyer. I used to write for Patheos for nearly 10 years. A column called No Longer Quivering. This is normally where I say a bunch of crap about this is my opinion and don't bully anybody I'm talking about. Hit the like button, ring the bell, all that. But I'm going to skip all that. I'm just going to jump right on ahead. This morning when I got on, same as everybody else, I saw on Llama Girl's page a little snippet of last night's Molly Go Lightly Live. Well, I'm not real crazy about Molly Go Lightly's everything she's done or her techniques or anything, or even her Vaughn McRae coverage, case coverage. I had to laugh. Why? Because somebody signed her up for a sex chat line. I guess we can all guess it was a certain person's terrible little minions, her stands, or as a colorful friend of mine used to say, fan tarts. Fan tarts, does that make me a, a tard? I don't know. Okay. Molly went with it. She called in on this thing she'd been signed up for. And pretended to be Katie Joy. And I have to say, I have not laughed so hard in one very long time. It was, it made for my first cup of coffee this morning, over the top wonderful. It made it wonderful. I was definitely going, oh my. You know, I was like, heaven forfend. I was definitely doing all of that. But, I'll put my fan away. It reminded me of back when the Tati Westbrook thing was popping off. A lot of us got crazy stuff. Somebody signed me up to work as a sex worker. I'm old. I'm retired. I'm definitely not the sex worker type. But one of her minions apparently signed me up for this, I believe. And I started getting all these emails asking me how much for that job that starts with blow. You know the one I'm talking about. And I would say... Gee, I'm terribly sorry, but you've been pranked. I am not somebody that hands out the job that starts with blow. It doesn't happen. There is no fellatio going on here. You've been pranked. And I get cussed out sometimes. I get a frailing from these guys. Like, they thought I owed them an answer. So what happened was I just said, okay, I'm going to give you an answer. So every time they got me and said, how much for the job called blow? I would go, $10,000. Not one of them argued with me. Not one of them said, are you kidding, you old lady? Not a one. It was just, thank you very much. And they went on their merry way. It solved it. I figured it would. Because somebody desperate enough for the job that starts with blow, that would settle for 10000 would give 10000 for that. I don't know what kind of conversation we would have to be having to end that one. But here we are. She's embroiled in some more lawsuits. And... It started all over again. Molly Go Lightly got those things. This morning after the Molly Go Lightly thing, I saw that someone had tried to sign me up for um, several different GoFundMe type places. They had tried to sign me up for a uh, place that funds these new, new inventions of things. A number of things. They were all sitting in my email box. And here's where it gets amusing. This is my public email box. It's not my personal one my family has. And it is not my business one. It's just the public one that I rarely check. So I checked it this morning and I had all those requests sitting there saying, hey, your last step before signing up for gimmemoney.com or whatever is clicking here. And I looked at the emails. They were all legitimate emails from legitimate places. So somebody has been running around trying to sign me up for crap and running up against the fact that they can't get to my email box. It's not very easy to. So I just kind of laughed. And then I looked at the Google, some kind of personal messaging service. And I had no less than 49 porn requests in there. So this is popping off again, and I think it's because someone is really struggling with the, with everything. This morning, she said that Steve's lawsuit was dropped. I have spoken with Steve. Steve 
served her pocket service saying a lawsuit is coming and then never filed. He did not file against her. So there's no lawsuit lawsuit to be dismissed. There's not one at all. Steve never filed against her. She filed against him. And today I got to see the entire thing. And all I can say is the one that made me laugh the hardest is the one that Steve has been sharing all over the internet where she claims that she is so frightened now that she has to have money to completely relocate her family to keep them safe and secure. Knitter, please. We know darn good and well you haven't relocated a damn thing. You're, think, you're acting like Steve needs to buy you a new place to live or pay a rental or whatever for you guys and moving expenses? This is one of the craziest lawsuits I've seen. And at the same time, she's making all these noises about the Todd Chrisley case in 7M being dismissed. Neither one of them were. Her lawyer argued both sides of the coin <laughs> between the two. One, she has apparently driv drug her feet so much that it is slowing down discovery. So her lawyer is saying, well, we don't want to do discovery until Todd is sentenced in his case, his other case, his federal case, which has nothing to do with her case. It has to do with tax money, taxes and uh, fraudulent applications to banks, I think it was. I don't know. I don't pay much attention to that because once I read that his former business manager, who was extremely jealous of him, was the one that filled out the forms. It just happened to be, I don't know, the only witness that the prosecution had it was like, yeah, this smells like a setup. So I'm not sure that it is indicative of anything of guilt or innocence with Todd. I talked to Todd a couple times. I like him. He seems like he's a, he's a, he's a Southerner. You know, I like that. And he seems like a decent type. Now, okay, you can't really tell that from a few minutes of talking to somebody, but he's certainly more decent than some folks. That's all I'm going to say. 7M, I wouldn't touch any of them or their lawsuit with kid gloves or with fireproof gloves because of all the things that have been filed against Katie, that one has the most likelihood to have legs. Now, I refuse to help or talk to anybody at 7M because they're affiliated with with uh, Bethel Redding. They're also affiliated with Hillsong. Two places I hate with a passion because of what happened in my old original church. And we were involved with both of those places. We have dead bodies at our old church. We have people that have died because they followed the advice of Bethel. And they died anyway. So anybody connected to Bethel is not going to be anybody that I'm going to have anything to do with. As much as I would like to see somebody lose their platform, I'm not going to give that side any information to help that happen. I hope Todd Chrisley brings her down. But actually, it doesn't really matter at this point. Katie is getting cocky. 7M missed dis the discovery deadline, so she thinks that means that they should automatically, dis uh, automatically dismiss a lawsuit. That's not happening either from the looks of it. It looks like what happened, happened is the courts decided to roll with a completely different date rollout for what happens when. So all that she was posting yesterday about all of her lawsuits going away is a little premature. And again, Steve never filed, so there's nothing to dismiss. Katie filed on him, and I read through that document, and it was the most interesting thing I've ever seen. I can't wait till Steve gives me the permission to share what I learned. I can't wait until uh, this whole thing goes to court. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be super interesting. That's all I can say. Um, I understand why Steve is not going ahead with his lawsuit. He actually has good reasons for not doing so. Um, 
And there's a lot of things that aren't out there that aren't in the public knowledge yet that will be eventually. And once all is explained, it's going to make sense. I know right now it looks like a jigsaw puzzle with about three quarters of the pieces missing. But trust me, it's going to be a beautiful picture before this is all revealed. Okay, I am going to go. I'm going to shut up and I am going to take a shower and go to bed and dream sweet dreams tonight of a world without lying without pain without all of that oh one thing i do want to point this out i pointed this out a couple times in the chat but i'm going to point it out again now kj is saying that i plagiarized her that the content that i was providing at no longer quivering was plagiarized by her and the stuff that i'm doing now is plagiarized by her knitter please I started working on No Longer Quivering and writing for them in 2009. I may have written a couple pieces back in 2008, a few guest pieces. So, but taking over and posting every day was 2009. 2010, the entire thing moved to Papios and we started doing our thing there. 2012, Katie Joy joined the moms groups and started what they they're claiming that she grifted them out of money to for all sorts of things i don't know i wasn't there so i can't say for sure that that happened or not and she switched her focus to various other groups and she did not appear on the radar with pathos until like 2017 2018 Somewhere in that time frame, I think it was 2018, because I was here in the house here. We were not long in this house, three or four months, when Katie appeared on my radar for the first time. And she didn't know who the Duggars were. She called them the Duggars. She didn't know who they were. She didn't know what the ATI, IBLP, Bill Gothard was. She didn't have a clue what Bob Larson, who D Bob Larson is and why it's famous. She didn't know who Lori Alexander was. She didn't know who Michael and Debbie Pearl were. She knew none of that. So from 2009 to 2018, I wrote my content relatively unmolested, except for their occasional flouncing fun be like uh, Tim Bailey. Um, and she didn't have a clue what was going on. I stopped writing for No Longer Quivering in... 2020. I felt that almost 10 years had been long enough and almost 11 years of dealing with doing the daily stuff was just enough for me. Time had come for me to retire and I wasn't even going to do this YouTube thing but towards the end of my time at Patheos they were pushing us all to do this sort of thing so I did. And I found I really like it. It's a good hobby and it is a hobby for me. I don't expect to ever make 10 trillion bucks, but I do find that I still have a passion for talking about this, and you know I'm writing my book, and part of me is kind of afraid because I think the, the moment the book is published, somebody is going to claim the stories as their own, but let me tell you, the day it's published and she tries to do that, I will strike her for copyright violations at that point. Right now, it's just her running her mouth saying that I'm copying from her, which is not true. Like I said, I've been around a lot longer than she has. I've seen and heard it all in the Quiverful movement. And no many stories about Bob, Bill Gothard and the whole IBLP that she has never begun to even touch upon. She didn't bother to pick my brain as much as she did about the Duggars. So she can still scream that I plagiarized from her, but I did not. She plagiarized from me. She took my entire life story. She tried to make it about her. She tried to say it was her life story going into the Fundy Church and coming out. I was in for damn close to 20 years. Okay, for a long time. I came out. I've been out 16 years. Wait a minute, I got to think about that. I think it was 17 years in and 16 years out. So it's been quite a long time. And I'm still working on undoing the damage to this day. There's still some things that are still in my brain that I still wrestle with. 
So that is why I still talk about those things. But I've also discovered that YouTube is this great place to talk about all kinds of things that are plaguing you or the things you're thinking about, everything from UFOs to God knows what, to cults, to ridiculous girls that have zero awareness, zero self-awareness, that every time their lips are moving, you know they're lying. <laughs> you just know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. They have the most ridiculous fan base on the planet who loves to send people all kinds of harassing things and sign them up for all kinds of harassing things. Um, I hope I hope that I can continue to be as laughing over it as Molly Go Lightly was when someone signed her up for that sex talk and she started really having herself a blast. I was reminded of the times that I've done the Nigerian romance scammers and that can't be bad. Okay, you guys, I'll be back tomorrow. I want to talk about Bob Larson. Bob Larson has just been wild lately. He has been talking like crazy about Anne Heche before she died, after she died, saying some crazy stuff and his website with his deliverance ministry crap is just unbelievable. Except that I know that a lot of churches, a lot of churches deal with that. Our old church, we had a number of deliverances, uh, exorcisms. I remember participating in one that was most definitely crazy. And I've told that story before. I'm going to tell it again tomorrow the time that they did the exorcism on the poor stoned kid. So be sure and tune in then. And I'll talk about that, even though I think I'm going to have to move the time back because I'm supposed to be beach walking first thing in the morning, and I can't wait. Love you guys.